closing bell. Well, it has been quite a near the previous one, but we have seen the Indian growth story stay intact. Actually, when you look at the Indian containerized growth versus the global growth, those numbers stand tall as well. That, that pretty much has been across sectors. But to talk further about that and the trade finance numbers for India vis-a-vis -vis the other countries, we are now joined by Vipul Sardana, who's global head, Morsk Trade Finance. Vipul, hi. Good to have you on the show. First things first, what is your sense really on the Indian growth story? When you look at the containerized growth versus the global numbers, how have uh, both the numbers been really? I think India has, has been a phenomenal story, right? And, uh, and especially the growth in the small and medium enterprise has been, has been fantastic. Mm. And if you look at all the other numbers, you know, the growth in literacy rate, the, the, the lifespan, the, the middle class, uh, I think that is all all added, and and trade, global trade in particular, is the engine for growth, mm. and 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 Maersk being the largest container shipping line in the world has played an integral part in that journey, and we intend to do so going forward as well. <laughs> so, uh, how would you read the last couple of years, and what are the projections now for the next year? Would you have any numbers to share with us? Correct. So, uh, out of in and out of India, Maersk does about a million containers every year, which is a whole lot, but. Worldwide, one in every five dry container and one in every four uh, reefer containers uh, move on a Maersk vessel. Uh, I think the BRICS economies in general with 44% of the world population uh, and almost 50% of the world output coming from these countries mm. uh, will continue to play an important part in global trade. And, uh, and I see the India story only, only surge ahead from where it is. I think the foundation has been laid with a lot of programs that have been run by the government, like Skill India, Make in India, Digital India. But I think the full impact of these programs is, is yet to be felt. Okay. Uh, what sectors would you really keep an eye on right now? Because, uh, uh, you know, th there have been various, uh, some sectors like automobiles, perhaps, IT, etc., have done quite well. SMEs, of course, is a uh, developing story. What is MERS really looking at when you, when you look at those sectors? I think across sectors, SME is going to be key focus mm. because 40% of the overall uh, uh, economic output comes from this sector, and, and and they create 60 million jobs. So it's a great it's a great story as well. But I think retail is going to be very big. Uh, I also think chemicals, uh, food, and agri uh, will continue to be our growth engines going forward. Hmm. How have you seen the international trade really? Because with the whole US and China trade concerns, the recession fears that the market seem to be talking about, and most international agencies now downgrading uh, the growth scenario, not just for this year, for the next as well. What kind of an impact are you working with? How are you preparing yourself? I think the, the, the forecast for global trade is stands at a modest 2 to 4%, which, hmm. is, which is not good for the industry. Uh, and I think across the world, the developed economies are are doing almost as much as five protectionist measures a week. But I think the cycle of globalization is irreversible. And today's world is is about opening doors and not not closing them. Um, um, I, I think it's a sign of worry. Uh, but 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 I but I also think that there the the benefits of of free trade are well documented. Mm. So wherever there have been free trade agreements, you know, the the Pacific Alliance grew at 8%, uh, the EU at 75 the ASEAN at, at 5%, uh, the results are eminent. So if the economic growth has to be sustained, mm. uh, I think free trade is going to be one of the key drivers. Mm. Uh, this being an election year as well, and, uh, you know, things tend to move faster when it comes to mm -hmm. policy reforms and the push is much stronger, the money spent is higher as well. Do you see that working in India's favour as well? I think I think the current government has done a great job in fixing the foundation around some of these things, um, uh, and I think uh, irrespective of who comes in next, uh, I don't know of any government in the world which will come in saying I, I, I'd like a poor economic performance or a poor growth performance. Mm. Uh, uh, I think the being the election year, we see some of these things playing out mm. and playing out faster than before. Mm. But I have firm belief that that some of these measures uh, and and policies that enable global trade. Um, uh, and, and enable the economy are going to continue. Hmm. Also, people in the last few years, we've seen uh, in the last couple of years, what I have had uh, in hand is that uh, Indian growth has been on the stronger note than vis-a-vis -vis the global growth. Do you see that picture uh, holding going forward in sense of what India imports and what India exports? Most definitely, yes, right? India is also a great domestic growth story, right? Hmm. So the consumerism, uh, the growth in the, uh, in, the, in the middle class, the purchasing power, 
uh, is growing up. I definitely see, uh, I mean, India aspires to be a 5 trillion economy by 2025. And I think uh, the enablement of global trade and, and the uh, access to capital to enable global trade is going to be a, a key factor in that. Hmm. What are the sectors that you have on your eye on now for 2019? I mean, you mentioned a few like retail, agriculture, chemicals, etc. Where specifically and uh, how do you look at Eng Indian geographies as well? Because we have, we have seen a good amount of growth in some southern states. Uh, some western states have done well. Ha have you seen India in that light too? So I think as it, as it pertains to, uh, to global trade, uh, one of the biggest barriers to global trade is access to capital. Mm. Uh, and uh, an SME uh, uh, business uh, is, is almost met with a 60% rejection rate when they, when they go out asking for money for global trade. Um, I think one of our focus is going to be how do we make it simple for an exporter in the hinterland of India, in the south of India, in the west of India, uh, make it as simple for them to access global markets and to be a part of this whole global trade story as much as their large corporate counterparts sitting in Mumbai, Delhi, Chennai. Mm. Uh, and I think that's going to be our focus area on how are we able to make things simple uh, mm. and remove barriers to trade for the small and medium enterprise across sectors. So we will final question then before we let you go. So what are MERSC plans for India for 2019 in sense of whether it's about trade finance, whether it's about... Uh, 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 you know, containerization, whether it's about pushing more growth or uh, trade going forward? So we started the trade finance business three years ago and, mm. and we, have, uh, we have disbursed over $700 million to, to our customers to enable and bring together a single window of flow of goods and flow of money for them. Uh, 100 of these customers are in India. We disbursed about $200 million in India alone uh, to these customers and we only intend to take this further. Our plans is to disburse $500 million, specifically focusing on the small and medium customers in India this year. Wonderful, with those numbers. Thank you so much, Vipul, for coming by Thanks and so sharing all those numbers and view with us. But with that